Have you ever had the feeling that your ex wants you back, but they're just playing games about it? That's what we're going to be getting into in this video. We're going to be talking about five games your ex plays when they want you back, but they're not being upfront about it. Please stay tuned through to the end because we're going to be talking about all five of these games. Uh, and drop a comment down below letting me know if you see any of these in what you're experiencing right now with your ex. Hey there, it's Clay with ModernLove.Life. As I said before, this video is about five games your ex plays when they actually do want you back, but they don't want you to know. So the first one is that they are going to pretend to be not that interested in you. I'm not really sure where it comes from, but you know, somewhere along the line, uh, both in men's dating advice and women's dating advice, it's, it's become basically common knowledge that uh, you know, you should not seem needy or desperate or interested and you should play hard to get or you should make it seem like you're aloof or you should make it seem like you couldn't care less or you should make it seem like uh, you're, you're not that into the other person. And, you know, let's be honest, this is a mind game, right? Because you're feeling like up here, but you're trying to pretend that you actually feel down here, right? So uh, this, this is probably one of the most common ones. Um, this is like definitely one of the most common ones that I hear from clients that they sort of are pre-indoctrinated with societal expectations. That's like, oh, I, I, I can't, I can't call my ex and ask them to meet up. Like, what if they think I'm being needy or something? Well, how else do you expect this to happen, right? Like, you, you could just do no contact until, you, like, one of you dies of old age, or um, you know, uh, or, or until the other one breaks and calls you, but. You know, if, if you just don't want to wait around for like weeks and months, then I would really recommend you pick up the phone and, and ask them to meet up with you, right? It is a, it is a really common thing. And um, you may be experiencing this with, with your ex if they are uh, interested in you, but trying to play it cool. And the big giveaway for this, most of the time, is that if you just wait a little bit longer and don't respond right away or um, maybe you couldn't respond right away because you were at work or you know driving or something like that um, they might fold and contact you again now you know again there's all sorts of people out there who have cultivated some sort of iron will because they've been following things like the no contact rule and all that. And I'm definitely not recommending that you just, you know, wait and wait and wait and wait for them to make a move. Um, but that's how you can tell if that's what they're doing. Okay. Uh, I don't want you to take the passive route, but if you're just, you know, living your life and can't get back to them for whatever reason, um, and they follow it up instead of just like letting it be, that's, that's a big clue that they're playing this game of, um, you know, I'm not that interested in you. The second game is someone else is interested in me. And this is where they're trying to kind of play both games here, the, the first game and then also the second one here, because they want to inspire you to take some sort of action because they don't want to come right out and say, hey, I like you, hey, I want to be with you. Um, and you don't seem to be really revealing your true feelings or intentions either. So what they might do is they might make it very well known that someone else is interested in, in them. They might say, oh yeah, you know, uh, so-and-so was, was flirting with me, so-and-so asked me out, so-and-so uh, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff, right? And this is intended to try to play into jealousy that you might have to get you to sort of tip your hand and for them to see where you're standing with all of this. You'll, you'll, you'll probably know this because they'll make it very well known <laughs> that, that they're interested in someone else. Um, but they're probably not going to be really walking through that open door. You know, they might speculate about it. like yeah someone someone seems interested in me maybe I'll say yes if they ask me out I don't know like they might they might speculate on it but they're probably not going to actively do it like yeah someone 
someone seemed interested in me and like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be in a relationship with them. Right. They're probably not going to do that because if they do like you, they're going to keep that doorway open for the two of you to be together. The third game that they might play is something called come and get me. It's, it's similar to these other ones. Basically, they're just going to be dropping what I would call open doors in front of you. They'd basically say something like, yeah, you know, um, I'm going to go to this event this weekend or, um, yeah, I've got nothing available. Uh, I, I've, I've got nothing that I'm doing this weekend or, um, you know, something like that. They're basically just dropping these open doors in front of you where you can be like, oh, well, you don't have anything going on. Maybe I'll come over or maybe we should do that or maybe I'll meet you at that event or, you know, something like that. Basically just letting you know their schedule, their availability, whatever, and seeing if you will kind of meet them halfway. Again, this is built off of that first game. They don't really want to make it too obvious that that they're interested in you because, you know, uh, <laughs> again, for, for, for whatever reason, uh, we have decided as, 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 a, as a culture that that would be like death if someone knew that you actually liked them. They're basically leaving the door open for you to walk through. And this is maybe a little bit more um, classy because they're very subtly saying that they're interested in you and leaving the door open and they're allowing you to rise and meet them at a similar level of investment. They're saying that they're available in some way or other and you can say, oh, well, you know what? I'm available too. What if we did that together? Or, or what if we, uh, what if I came over? Or what if you came over and we, you know, spent some time together or whatever? Um, so, th so that's definitely one way they might try to to test to see your level of interest as well. By the way, if you like this video, please help me out by hitting that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribing to this channel as well too if you're not already subscribed. And please make sure you also hit that notification bell as well. All of these things do help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Um, it would also help me out immensely with my low self-esteem as well if you just dropped a comment down below in the comment section letting me know that you like these videos that I do. Um, it also helps us out with the YouTube algorithm as well too. All right, so the fourth uh, game that they might play if they are interested in you but trying to, you know, play it down, but they might try to hide how over-invested they are with you by trying to really downplay it, by trying to make it seem as if they are playing it really cool, right? The big giveaway for this one is they might try to really play it up about how you know, chill and calm and easygoing they are, but you can tell that they put a lot of effort and energy into that statement or that text message or that, you know, whatever it is. It's, it's, it's like, okay, this is probably something that someone had to draft up and go over and proofread, you know, multiple times. They probably thought about it for, you know, <laughs> maybe maybe several hours or whatever before they actually, you know, sent it out to you. Or maybe they rehearsed the, the statement many times before they, they, they told it to you. Um, but it's trying to convey this attitude of, you know, hey, I'm chill, I'm easygoing and all that. Um, that's how you're really going to be able to, 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 to tell that there's a heightened level of investment on their end, even though the, maybe the words that they're saying are saying the opposite, that it's, you know, a very low level of investment. Um, and again, that, you know, that's, if we're to take the shoe and put it on the other foot, that's why it's important to work on your way of being um, through all of this, because it's very common for people to be very over-invested and think that if they just send some sort of text message that they spend, you know, five, four, four or five hours drafting up about how uninvested they are and about how easygoing they are and about all the, you know, three or four different examples of how they're easygoing and all that, that, you know, your way of being is going to shine through regardless of how much you may try to hide it. So the most powerful thing that you can do is to work on aligning yourself with that way of being that you want, okay? And, and, and by the way, um, if you want some help with that, we do have this uh, uh, subliminal recording that I made that you can listen to while you're sleeping 
and it's going to uh, put some affirmations into your subconscious mind while you are sleeping. You know, that's when the doorway between the uh, the conscious and unconscious is wide open, and that's when you're more suggestible. So, um, you know, go ahead and listen to it while you're sleeping. You're going to be sleeping anyway. You might as well be using that time to program yourself to uh, have better outcomes in your love life and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, uh, that's a little bit of a side tangent, but um, go ahead and check it out. Anyway, uh, the last mind game that your ex plays when they actually want you back is that they actively discourage you from being in a relationship with them. Um, Despite the fact that the two of you are connecting well and having good interactions. Now again, don't get get me wrong. Like they may just not want to be with you at all. Like if the two of you just had a big blowout fight and you know, they did the thing from the movie where they like dumped all your stuff out the window and left it on the front yard and everything like that. yeah, they're, they're probably legitimately upset at you, and they probably legitimately in that moment don't want to get back together with you. But if you're at a different place where you're connecting well, um, the two of you are having positive interactions, you're doing a lot of the stuff that we've talked about, advanced relational skills, you're doing a lot of the stuff we've talked about focusing on the, in on the emotional connection, then um, and then you're getting the act of discouragement Things like, oh, you know, you and I were so incompatible, we will never work out together. Or, uh, you know, um, you know, we should just date other people. We're better off as friends. Stuff like that. That's actually a, a big clue that they actually do want to get back together with you. Now, what do I, how, how could this be? It's because this whole process is a journey for them of learning how to trust you, trust themselves to make a relationship decision and also trust in the dynamic between the two of you. And as the two of you connect deeper and deeper, they're going to want that. It's going to feel good, but it's also going to trigger their fear because they're going to say, hey, we're, we're getting closer. What if this ends up getting me hurt again because of this or because of that or because of uh, you know whatever happened in the past? What if I end up opening up my heart to this person again and I end up falling flat on my face? What they might do is out of that place of fear, out of that place of, of feeling like, hey, I might be taking a, a big risk here, they could shut down and they might say, you know, oh, like, you're probably not that serious anyway. We, 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 maybe we should just date other people, right? And, and if you were to say, you're right, we should date other people. You're right, we are better off as friends. You know, you're right, I could do better than you. You're right, um, a million and one other people would be interested in me. Maybe I'll just go date them right now. Then they're just going to breathe a sigh of relief and say, whew, thank goodness I didn't open myself up again. Thank goodness I didn't um, take, a, take a leap of faith here and say, yeah, you know what, maybe there is something here between the two of us. Thank goodness I played it safe. Um, and so, you know, I know that there's a lot of advice out there that tells people You know, you got to make it seem like you don't care. You got to make it seem like uh, you're not interested in all that. But if they're at this point, all that advice is going to backfire on you big time. So because they're looking for someone to to confirm to them that says, hey, you know, I know you're having a change of heart here and I know it's hard and I know it's risky and I know it's a little bit scary. But you know what? I'm feeling the same way, too. And if we're both in this together, then we can make this whole relationship and this whole dynamic work. Those are the games that your ex plays when they want you back. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's, it's, it's probably the most common ones that I've seen. Um, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please make sure you check out this video series over here on what we call your ex's five stages of getting back together. It's a um, very enlightening series that will let you understand your ex's emotional world and why they do the things that they do. With that being said, thanks so much. Take care, and I'll talk to you next time.